Hi there everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. In this video, I'm going to take you through all the haloalkane functional group theory from the OCRA specification in A-level chemistry, which can be found in module 4. I recommend you check out the video description for this tutorial, where you'll find timestamps for all the different parts of the topic we will cover, and I may have put some further information should I see this topic come up in examinations further down the line after the initial posting of this video. Finally, before we start, don't forget that you can click the little eye to the top right hand corner of the screen to find links to some of our other Module 4 videos. Here you will also find a great follow up video to this tutorial which covers the breakdown of ozone as a result of nitrogen monoxide radicals. I'll mention this later in the video as well. Let's get started. So before we actually get started looking at the reactions of the haloalkanes, we need to know a little more about the differences in the strength of the carbon-halogen bond. The haloalkanes are a bit different from the other organic functional groups we have seen so far in Module 4, because the atom at the end of the bond with the carbon can actually be different since it could be any of the halogens from Group 7. There is then a trend in the strength of the carbon-halogen bond that you can see outlined on screen now. The carbon to fluorine bond is the strongest and then they decrease in strength down the group with the weakest being the carbon to iodine bond. Instead of saying a bond is stronger, you can describe it as having a larger bond enthalpy. Please be very careful in the exam when describing this trend, as in my experience, I found that it's very easy to forget you're meant to be comparing the carbon-halogen bond strength and end up just referring to the halogen, which of course is wrong. We can prove this trend in the carbon-halogen bond strength using a substitution reaction that we'll outline the setup of on the next page. So this slide is all about how we can perform an experiment to investigate the carbon-halogen bond strengths we mentioned a moment ago. The reaction at the top of the screen right now is an example of the hydrolysis of a haloalkane in a substitution reaction which uses water. Along with the water and the haloalkane, you would also have some aqueous silver nitrate and some ethanol present that you can see mentioned in the brackets above. The silver nitrate provides us with Ag plus ions, which then react with the halide ion kicked out by the reaction. In this example, you can see a chloride ion of Cl- in the products, which is released from the chloromethane reactant, and then this chloride ion will form a white silver chloride precipitate when it reacts with the Ag plus. We could set up an experiment like the one you can see in the image, which has all the haloalkanes such as one chlorobutane, one bromobutane and one iodobutane all in test tubes with ethanol and aqueous silver nitrate. The silver halides of AgCl, AgBr and AgI are all precipitates with the colours of white, cream and yellow respectively. The rate at which the silver halide precipitates are formed in the test tube solutions informs us about the strength of the carbon-halogen bond. For example, we would notice that the yellow precipitate of AGI would be the first to form out of these three. This is because the carbon-iodine bond is the weakest and therefore the 1-iodobutane would react very quickly in the substitution reaction. This then releases the iodide ion that can then form the silver iodide precipitate. Now whilst this reaction does technically show the haloalkane functional group changing to an alcohol, we would absolutely not suggest this setup as a way of targeting this kind of a functional group change. Let's have a look at what reagents and conditions I would suggest if I wanted to convert the carbon-halogen bond to an alcohol functional group. To change the haloalkane functional group to that of an alcohol, we use aqueous alkali, such as sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH. 
This is an example of a substitution reaction in the form of a hydrolysis. Whilst this equation may not make the definition seem obvious, hydrolysis is defined as the addition of water to break a bond. Both the substitution reactions we have seen so far in this video are examples of hydrolysis substitution reactions, even though this one may not look like it. Here you can see chloromethane is becoming methanol and notice only a small piece of the molecule is changing. It's just the carbon halogen bond and it becomes a carbon to OH bond. Nothing else on the molecule changes. Here are some other examples of this reaction and please take the time to study and notice the small change to the organic molecule made each time. You'll also notice that I've put a little aqueous after the alkali in each case. This doesn't always need to be shown and it's just my way of reminding you that you need to mention it's aqueous alkali in the reagents for this reaction. Whilst this reaction is a short, sweet and simple one compared to some of those which we have seen in other organic topics from Module 4, it does actually come with a new curly arrow mechanism. This mechanism is called nucleophilic substitution and it's far more straightforward than the electrophilic addition mechanism that we saw in the alkenes topic. Once again, the curly arrows shown in the outline of this mechanism shown the movement of an electron pair. A nucleophile, which is used here, is an electron pair donor by definition, and that makes it very distinctly different from an electrophile, which is an electron pair acceptor that we saw in the alkenes topic. In this example, the nucleophile, our electron pair donor, is the hydroxide ion of OH- provided by the aqueous alkali conditions. Notice that in the outline of the mechanism, we do not show the group 1 metal ion that's part of the alkali formula. There are two curly arrows in this mechanism. The first starts from the lone pair on the hydroxide ion and attacks the delta positive carbon atom in the carbon halogen bond. Then the second curly arrow goes from slap bang in the middle of the carbon halogen bond out and onto the delta minus halogen atom. There is no intermediate stage at all, but you must always show the products. Again, please notice there is no group 1 metal ion shown anywhere in the outline of the mechanism, and you must not include one. Let's have a look at drawing this mechanism from scratch. Please take careful note of the specific movement of the curly arrows in this curly arrow mechanism. It's really important you show them starting and ending at the correct locations and that it's absolutely clear to the examiner. This next part of the haloalkanes topic explores the environmental concerns from the use of organohalogen compounds, specifically their role in the depletion of ozone in the Earth's upper atmosphere. The equilibrium on screen now is the natural equilibrium of the ozone layer and you can see ozone's formula here is O3. Yes, you do need to know this equation off by heart. Now, CFCs were really popular at one point in history and were used in a variety of things, such as cooling systems in refrigerators and also in aerosol sprays. 
CFC stands for chlorofluorocarbons, and it actually covers a very wide range of different organohalogen compounds. These very stable molecules would actually rise up to the upper atmosphere and cause for the breakdown of the Earth's protective ozone layer. Thankfully, the Montreal Protocol, which was signed and agreed to by members of the United Nations in 1987 and then published in 1989, controls the phased-out manufacturing of these harmful substances. It is expected that the ozone layer will return to normal levels by the year 2070. You need to know what the equations for this depletion of ozone looks like as a result of the CFCs. On screen now you can see three different reactions. The top one uses an example of a CFC reacting in the upper atmosphere to form two free radicals. You are very likely to be given a different CFC in the exam. The other two equations are recognisable as propagation style equations. As these equations often use a chlorine radical, they tend not to vary. We will examine how these propagation style equations represent catalyzed ozone depletion very shortly. First, however, what has happened to this CFC? In the upper atmosphere, UV light causes for the photodissociation of a carbon halogen bond, which is a good example of homolytic bond fission. You can actually see this in the top equation with the formation of the two free radicals represented by the little dot. Remember that free radicals are shown with a single dot in their formula to represent their single unpaired electron. For this CFC molecule, I have written the equation to show the carbon-chlorine bond breaking as this would be the weakest in its structure. The chlorine free radical that is formed is responsible for catalyzing the breakdown of ozone in the two equations underneath. Let's examine this in more detail. Take careful note of all the species that are shown in these two equations and their correct formula. Thankfully, there are very few alternatives to this, and the one on screen now is the most popular in the exam. We'll talk about the alternatives very shortly. The first equation out of these two propagation stages shows the chlorine radical reacting with ozone, which remember is O3, and causes for the formation of a ClO radical and an oxygen molecule. The second equation, which is the final one shown on screen, shows this newly formed ClO radical reacting with seemingly a single oxygen atom to form another oxygen molecule and reforming the original Cl radical. The single O atom that we can see here is unusual and you would find, if you researched it online, that it's technically a radical, but we don't show it as one in chemistry A-level. The fact that the chlorine radical is reformed in this final equation means that it's a catalyst. These final two propagation style equations can actually be combined to give an overall equation which shows the depletion of ozone in the upper atmosphere. This equation is a different one from the natural ozone equilibrium that we saw in an earlier slide. To combine the equations, we first need to cancel down anything that appears to be the same on both sides that you can see I'm doing on screen now with the red crosses. Here you can see that our remaining resulting equation shows O3 reacting with a single O atom to form two oxygen molecules. Please learn all these equations. There are some trickier equations that actually use a nitrogen monoxide radical instead of a chlorine radical. It also therefore has nothing to do with CFCs. And to learn more about these versions, click the little i to the top right hand corner of the screen now to watch one of our older videos covering this version of the content. So that's it for this Halo Alkanes online tutorial. Click the links on screen now or with the eye to the top right hand corner of the screen to take yourself to some of our other Module 4 Organic Chemistry tutorial videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay updated. And until next time, happy revising.